Imagine you have 10,000 products. You hit your products endpoint and... This is our current endpoint and it returns all products. This might seem fine until you have thousands of records. That's gonna crush performance and nobody wants to scroll through thousands of thousands of records of JSON. Let's start to clean this up. We're gonna add two simple parameters, page and page size. By default, they'll be one in 10. That way, even if the client doesn't send anything, we're not sending back everything. We'll also add a hard cap, like 100 max, just to prevent people from accidentally requesting 10,000 records in one shot. Here we're getting all of the products, and this is passing through the global filter, depending if the user is an admin or not. In order to see how we implemented soft delete, check out the last video. Next, we can calculate how many items in total there are. This is important because the front end needs to know how many total pages exist, not just the current slice. So next up, we're going to add the total pages. What we're doing here is we're getting the total items and dividing them by the page size. So if you have a thousand products and your page size is 10, that means you have a hundred pages. If you have a hundred total items and the page size is still 10, that means you have 10 pages. Then we're going to apply the skip and take. This is the classic SQL style pagination. We skip n records and take the next chunk. For example, if we are on page one, this is how it's going to proceed. We're gonna do page minus one. So in this case, if the page is one, it's going to be zero. Zero multiplied by page size, which is 10, that's going to be zero. So we're not gonna be skipping any records here. Then we're going to take the 10 rows. So in this case, when the page is one, we're going to take from one till 10. Let's say it's page number two. So it's going to be page minus one, so that's gonna be one. Multiplied by page size, that's gonna be 10. So we're going to skip the first 10 rows, and then we're going to take the next 10 rows. If the page is three, we're going to subtract that by one, that's gonna give us two. We're gonna multiply by page size, that's going to give us 20. So we're gonna skip the first 20 rows, and we're gonna take the next 10 rows. And we're just going to return products. Now let's just run this and go back to Postman. So in our get products endpoint, I'm leaving the page and page size to be the default. Now I'm gonna send it. You can see that was way faster and the total response size is way less. Specifically, we're getting rows from ID number six all the way to ID number 15. Let's increment the page. If we go to page two, we're gonna notice that we're going to be starting from, page, from 16 all the way to 25. Let's say we want to fetch 20 records. We're going to start from 26 all the way to 45. The reason being, since we increased our page size, if you remember our skip function, it's going to subtract 2 minus 1, so 1, and it's going to multiply it by page size, so that's going to be 20. So we're going to skip the first 20 rows and get the next 20 rows. Now this isn't the most optimal way to do this. First of all, we don't have any metadata, we're just returning the items. Second, you can imagine that if you want to add pagination to another endpoint, you're going to have to write all of this code over and over again. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to create an iQueryable extension. Before we even get to creating that extension method, I'm going to be creating the response DTO that is going to include the data as well as the metadata. I'm going to be calling it paginated result and it's going to accept a generic. First thing we need to do is we're going to add int and the page. We're going to add the page size. We're going to add the total pages. We're going to add total items and we're going to add the list of items. Keep in mind, you do not necessarily need all of this data. You can just return the items. However, I like to return everything back. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the extension method itself. We're going to say public static async task. And this task is going to accept a paginated result of type generic t. In this case, I'm going to be calling this function paginate async, and it's going to accept the parameter t. Now it's going to accept a couple of things. It's going to first take the iQueryable, which we're going to be extending on. It's going to take the page, and it's going to take the page size. First thing we wanna do is we wanna take the page size limitation logic, 
and move it inside this extension. Second thing we want to do is move the total items and be able to calculate it inside. So we're going to cut this and put it in here and instead of products we're going to run this on the query itself. Third, as you might have guessed, is we need to take the total pages. We just need to move this inside of our method. Now all that's left is to implement our pagination on the iQueryable. For that we're going to say var items is equal query and now what we're going to do is take the same code that we have written right here and we're going to paste it here. Let's just clean up our controller right here. And you can see when we removed all of that clutter, our controller looks even cleaner. We're not done yet. Now we need to prepare our return object. For that, we're going to return new paginated result T and we're going to start to pass in our data. I made a small mistake here, guys. So instead of our paginated result, instead of returning a list, we should return an I queryable of type T. Now if we come here, this error should resolve itself. And this is it. This is our pagination function. How do we use it? Let's go do that. So inside of our product controller, we're first going to get our product. Then we're going to say paginate async. As you notice, this is an async function. So we need to await this. And we need to modify our controller to support awaiting. Now in our paginate function, all we have to do is pass in the page and the page size. And look how much cleaner our controller is. And we made a reusable, efficient paginate function right here. Now let's save this and run it and go back to Postman. So without changing any of the parameters and keeping in mind the data that's coming from 26 all the way up to 45, I'm going to run this call again. First thing you notice is the metadata. Now we're knowing, we know which page we're fetched. We know the page size. We know the total pages that we have available and we know the total number of items in our database. And if you notice inside of the items array, we're still fetching items from ID 26 all the way down to 45. So nothing really changed. The only thing that changed is that we added pagination so we can query and fetch our data more efficiently and in a more paginated way. And we made a paginate async function that you can append to any iQueryable to paginate your data. So that's EF Core pagination done right. And hey, if you missed the last video, I showed you how to implement soft deletes in Entity Framework Core, including how to hide deleted items by default but make them visible to admins. It pairs perfectly with this pagination setup. Go check it out next. I'll leave the link on the screen and in the description below.